Hi, I'm Arnaud Bardari, Master Sommelier, Head of Sales of Watson's Wine Wholesale Team. And I am uh, Sara Kiki, Group Sommelier and Beverage Manager for Maximal Concept. Today we are in uh, Sip Song to teach you the four rules of food and wine pairing. Please follow up and subscribe for more wine knowledge. Okay, let's start. Rule number one, always keep food and wine at similar weight. Yeah, you're completely right. Uh, it's probably one of the easiest food and wine pairing to start with. If you've got a light course, obviously you're not going to put the wines too rich in aromas, not to overpower, let's say, the flavors of the light course. So you keep them at the same intensity. For example, with this uh, watermelon salad, which is so refreshing and crisp, you might think of champagne. And like this one, our Gosse Blanc de Blanc Brut, uh, which is so mineral and uh, refreshing and a bit citrusy. And this citrusy actually pairs very well with the sweetness from the watermelon. Yeah, completely, <coughs> completely right. I love the champagne also with the, with the watermelon. I think it pairs, pairs perfectly. Uh, we had also just on the side an uh, American Chardonnay just here to, to compare it and think which one could pair the best. And I completely agree that I would definitely go for that freshness into champagne. Even though American Chardonnay is a great, great wine, it's an amazing, amazing reference and producer. Uh, it has a little bit more power into it. It's slightly over, let's say, overpower the flavors of, uh, of, the, dish, uh, of the dish today. I will definitely match it with a, with a more creamy character dish, uh, some dishes in sauce, a bit more intense in flavor. Yeah, the that's a very big guy for yeah. this. For the watermelon salad. I love the way you say it. It's a big guy for the watermelon. Rule number two, we match flavor intensity with the sauce. Always look beyond the main ingredient and consider the whole dish. It's very easy to pair red meat with red wine and seafood and poultry with white wine. Uh, they always look the safest choice, but not always the best one. Like in this case, we have these charcoal grilled cures. You might think about white wine because it is uh, seafood, but actually a Pinot Noir from New Zealand would be the best choice. It's actually very good. I like, <clears throat> I love what you said about it and the, the fact that white wine could usually, in general, mind pair better with fishes. Uh, in that squid, you've got actually few elements. The charcoal character of it that brings this like toasty, like literally charcoal flavors that pair way better with reds. You got also another ingredient, which is the soy sauce. We talked about sauce and that pairs it perfectly with it. Now we need to try also with the different sauce we've got. Uh, we've got some pretty hot sauces, which... <laughs> I love spice. And spice, and yeah, you love spicy. You try with a few of them. That's satay sauce. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. I love the slide. So obviously peanutty character that you will have with the satay sauce that pairs, pairs with the flavors of the wine. But you see this pinot has got that very round, mellow, creamy texture. And you also feel the same in the sauce with that creamy character, this very round, juicy. So the, everything goes at once. I would love actually to, to go for all this spicy, like pretty Please. intense in Chile, even the sauce by itself. Because there is one thing that can, wow, this is a bit, uh, a little bit spicy. <laughs> we talked about sauces and what can pair. A small ingredient in a food and wine pairing can actually change the entire perception that you will have on your palate. Try with the hot chili. Character that another sauce could have. So the same base ingredient, two different sauces. The first glass we had of this Pinot was like pure pleasure, juicy, fresh, easy drinking. And now it completely ends it to the opposite. Yeah, it changed completely the, the dish. A nice thing about this uh, Pinot Noir is the aged release, which Pegasus Bay started back in 2006 with the intention of release the wines after 10 years of bottle aging. And this aging actually adds to the, to the bottle of the wine more complexity, more tertiary characters, which pair perfectly with charcoal flavors. Rule number three, consider the spiciness. When you say spiciness, you don't mean only the level of it. We only need to consider if we want to increase it or if you want to relieve it. That's tricky.
So how is it for you? So I love spicy and when I go for Tom Yam, I would definitely go for a red Spanish wine from Ribera del Duero, like this Hacienda Solano Selección 2021. Impranillo might be high in uh, tannins and those definitely help to increase the spicy sensation. At the opposite, I'm not a big fan of how spicy and can't really handle it. So that's why I've been choosing the total opposite as a wine and go to Germany. So it's a wine that you could call off dry, so there is ready to sugar. What mentions it on the bottle here, it's the fact that it's Spätlese. So in German means, let's say, late harvest. So they have different categories. Uh, it's a Riesling, 100% from the Moselle area. And, and again, I think for that dish, you will need something a little bit sweet to balance and cool down the amount of spices you have. High acidity that will cut through the fattiness of the dish and, and make a perfect balance for, for it. That's actually an interesting one. I should try it. <laughs> <laughs> Rule number four, also a tricky one, the sweetness. Yeah, we have been talking about weight, intensity and uh, spiciness. You should know the, the answer now when it comes to pair wine with dessert. You definitely need to go for a sweet wine with a similar intensity of the dessert. Yes, yeah, so here we have a banana pancake or what you could call roti is a very classic dish from Thailand. Like it's pretty sweet. You've got concentrated milk, you've got uh, so banana, obviously, chocolate sauce, quite intense. And for that, we've been matching also a pretty sweet wine. As you mentioned, we needed to match the sugar content in both dish and the wine. So we go to Hungary, so completely on the northeast of the country, an area called Tokai. I'm sure everyone knows. And here we can calculate and understand the degree of sweetness into that Tokai. So they call it in Putonios. Putonios are historically all baskets of wine, and the more Putonios, so the more baskets of sweet, like botrytis berry you would put in your barrel, the sweeter it will be. So you usually have this classic rule saying, the more Putonios, the, the higher the number is, the sweeter it will be. Till what you could call Essentia, the sweetest of them all. But this one pairs, pairs it perfectly. Uh, I love that because in Toka you usually have this creamy and also like pretty ripe stone fruit, ripe exotic character into it that reminds you the, the banana, the banana flavor. And then it has very uh, rich complexity and high acidity. And actually, I think that this high acidity, even though it's a sweet wine, this high acidity it helps you to keep eating and drinking nonstop. Did you learn any amazing food and wine pairing today? Please let us know by leaving a message in the comments below. So if there is any food and wine pairing, food you don't really know how to do with, uh, things you could research for, you have any question, do not hesitate to let us know. And don't forget to like, comment, share and subscribe. We will see you next time. See you. Santé. Cheers. Santé.